Uh, as mentioned before, my name is David Cox, lead meteorologist here at the National Weather Service in Jackson, Mississippi. This is a tropical weather briefing uh, for the Weather Service uh, Jackson forecast area uh, as of 12 p.m. Wednesday, September 11, 2024. So the first important updates for this briefing are that Hurricane Francine is moving northeast uh, as a Category 1 hurricane expected to make landfall later this evening. Uh, the big changes were uh, some changes to the wind threat and uh, some additional changes to the precipitation totals. But more importantly, the wind hazards have been expanded eastward with some uh, trimmed on the western side of that as well. So the wind potential remains uh, consistent with previous forecasts. Uh, there's only a slight eastward adjustment to the tropical wind hazards and we added the tropical storm warning for Covington, Lamar, Jones, and Forest counties in southeast Mississippi and removed the tropical storm watch from Concordia Parish in Louisiana. Um, now, we'll mention that on that western edge, there still could be some lingering gust, and we'll discuss that as well. So here are the current watches and warnings currently in effect. Uh, as mentioned before, that, that tropical storm warning has been expanded eastward, and that's really the main adjustment right now, and then removing Concordia Parish. And we do have that flash flood watch as well. So here's the earliest reasonable uh, time of tropical storm force wind. Um, we are expecting uh, the probabilities are highest in there in central Mississippi, really along the Interstate 55 corridor, uh, and we'll go over a little more time of onset and duration of those wind impacts as well. So a little more zoomed in version of the uh, probabilities. As you go further east, the probabilities do drop off, uh, but there, there is a thing with the storm just offshore uh, and seeing it uh, off the Hammond radar, we are, it does seem as though things are moving kind of towards somewhat of a center line right along the uh, hurricane center track. So things are pretty consistent and seems like they're running on, on course. So here's our updated uh, wind threat graphic. Uh, as mentioned before, the wind potential remains consistent with only a slight eastward adjustment. And really the eastward adjustment was to the elevated area where there could be some wind gusts up to 55 miles per hour and potential for widespread down trees, power lines, and power outages as well. So on this graphic, we do have the timing for onset. And this also includes, for the most part, the duration. So for the Highway 84 corridor and south of Interstate 20 after into this evening after 7 o'clock into early Thursday morning after midnight, there will be some continuing wind threat after that as well. But the highest impacts are expected at least through that time frame. Uh, and the Interstate 20 corridor uh, from 10 p.m. through 7 a.m., but as mentioned before, there could be uh, some potential that lingers later. And then as the system begins to weaken along uh, the Interstate 55 uh, or Interstate 20 corridor and moves northward into the Highway 82 corridor, there could be uh, some potential into the overnight hours and early Thursday through around midday uh, for that onset and duration of uh, the highest wind impacts there in the Highway 82 corridor. So um, with it moving into the I-20 corridor right around, you know, the time of rush hour, definitely is an impactful time. And uh, so just be aware that those impacts could extend uh, potentially after, even though the wind may begin to subside after that uh, 7 a.m. time frame. Flash flooding threat uh, is still fairly consistent. The four to six inches is possible with two to four likely uh, to the west. And with it shifting to the east, uh, most of the higher impacts do look to be on the along and east of the center line of the track. This could also cause some minor rises and minor uh, river flooding is possible uh, with this as well. So here's our storm total rainfall expected. Uh, quite a bit uh, anticipated in the coastal areas of Mississippi and Louisiana, and then moving along the Interstate 55 corridor into the uh, Golden Triangle as well. So as mentioned before, four to six inches uh, looks to be the um, main thing. Now, with this being over a longer duration, uh, some areas can handle uh, some of that rainfall, but uh, localized 
uh, flooding urban areas and poor drainage areas could have that potential for flash flooding. So with that eastward track, uh, the highest potential severe weather remains in southeast Mississippi and still remains relatively low, uh, but we will have some uh, bands that will come, come in later this afternoon and persist. So that's basically everything uh, with the briefing, and uh, we will open the floor up for questions.